Hello everyone, welcome to day three, the 30 day coloring challenge. I've created a watercolor card for Pretty Pink Pasha's blog hop. That is tomorrow. A little confusing there, but there's more information on my blog. And I've divided this card into two parts. Um, it's hard to condense a project like this into one video. It's already 16 minutes long. So I've sped it up a little bit um, because it's pretty basic. Right now I am just putting down a wash, which is I've taken some color, added water, and I'm just putting a wash on that butterfly. That's how I want to start. Now it's a little bit more color than I wanted, so I'm dabbing some of that off. I really wanted like a pastel-y um, butterfly. So I'm, that's the great thing about watercolors. You can wet it and t remove some colors. So now I'm adding more water so that the colors will move around and kind of do the work for me. I am no artist by any means. I, I guess I'm a colorist because I like to color, and, but I'm by far from an expert. Um, so right now I have a very fine tip watercolor brush and I have a very dark color and I'm just adding it in the crevices and along the edge. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some water to that. I always like to add the darker color first and see how it moves around adding the right amount of water so that their colors move kind of naturally is kind of a trick. And it's nothing I've mastered, but it's fun to experiment and play with. So I'm adding a little bit more color here and down by the center of the butterfly. On day one, I don't know if you saw, but I did a shaped card with the same butterfly using some Copic markers. It's an entirely different look. I love this butterfly and it has so many uses, so I decided to use it for two videos. It's, it's also a great butterfly to practice watercoloring on. In part one I mentioned, but I'm just going to remind you again that for this particular card I used embossing paste, some clear embossing paste, and heated it up. So the great thing about an embossed image, it acts as a little barrier. So the water kind of stays in its own confined little area. And it really gives it a different look. And in the end of the video, I wanted to show you how it looks using the exact same colors with just some stamped in black ink and it just looks so different. Once you're comfortable with watercoloring with embossing, I encourage you to just stamp it and do it because I think the colors are more free and it gives it a different look and so just experiment and see. See what you think. Now as you can, I'm continuing to move the color around. I'm using this fine tip brush to move some of the water along. And it, it's fun to watch it kind of explode. As I work in sections and move around my butterfly, um, it just makes it easier for me. And again, you know, just let the water do the work for you. If you feel like it's running in over the embossed line, you can always dab some off, or it lends itself to a nice artistic look. Um, but it's, it's fun to have a more contained look as you do with an embossed image. Um, this is actually the first time in a long time I've watercolored with some with an embossed image. And um, it's cool. You can also use, like, you can iron it off. So you need, like, a protective layer between the paper and 
a medium to low setting on your iron and then lift off the embossing um, and that's a whole nother look there too and then it's flat and you can add a stencil or other techniques as well um, so there's just so many things you can do it's it's such a fun hobby um, I like to use pinks and reds and mix orange and yellow in with them a lot like I've done today um, it's, a, it's a cool color combo so I'm going to be adding with my fine tip brush some more of the concentrated color right in the center of the butterfly after I do this wash on the tips of the wings. I hope you don't mind. I'm going to speed this up faster now because you're going to get tired of me talking and it'll shorten the video. So I like to dry it sometimes in between, as you saw. Now here goes the concentrated color. Remember I added that dot of water to that so it's nice and ready for me. And the body of the butterfly will be some maroon mixed with brown or black. Really, whatever you have on hand, whatever's readily available. I'm going to heat set that again and move on after I dry my paper I like to mold it play with it and it kind of straightens it out and I when I dry it I dry it from the front and from the back and mess around with it and it doesn't really it corrects any warping that I might have Plus, when I use the foam tape on the back, that also makes it pretty flat. So I kind of start out with it fairly flat, and that flattens it as well. I'm adding some more concentrated color here. And I always like to have the concentrated color either on the outside, so your eyes are focused coming in, or in the center and kind of coming out. But I kind of pick an area. And it's kind of whatever I'm in the mood for. Now once I finish my watercoloring, I'm going to use Simon's Stamps Large Hello. I use it more than I use any dye, except for maybe a circle or a square. And while I tiptoe around this butterfly, I'm just going to tell you about the die cut. I love putting a large die cut over something like this and cutting right into your image. So what I'll be doing is I'll be laying the large hello on top of the butterfly and I don't show that in the video because it's very basic and your time is valuable. So I lay it on top of the butterfly and then I die cut it four other times and I glue them together and then I glue it on top of my card. And it really makes any artwork that you've done really exceptional. You'll find that when you finish coloring something, whether it's with watercolors or markers, to go back and add a little more color in the crevices, it really enhances your image. Now I've almost finished here coloring all the centers of the dots on the um, the wings. I'm just using a dark brown and then I'm going to just share this with you. I wanted this is the stamped image in black and I just thought I'd go ahead and wet two sections. I used the exact same colors on this project and I just wanted to show you how the colors move a little bit differently. And I, you've seen it before, and again, I am no expert. I'm a crafter, not an artist, and I just enjoy coloring and playing around. But I just wanted to, for you to see how these colors move on the stamped black image. There's no heat embossing on this, so it moves around differently.
Um, sometimes it almost gives you, depending on the amount of water that you have, like a tie-dye effect. And if you feel like you're going over the lines and you don't want that kind of look, just grab your napkin or towel and blot some off. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to speed this up. And I hope you were able to see a little bit of the difference between an embossed watercolored image and just a stamped watercolor image. So hop on over to my blog to read more about the Pretty Pink Posh Blog Hop and the 30 Day Color Challenge. There's giveaways and lots of exciting things that will be happening for the month. Always give your image a little heat set and a little blot before you finish. Now this is the large hello that I die cut on top of the image and I just love how it enhanced the butterfly. What do you think? Do you like it? I sure hope so. And then here's the final card. And then this is what how you can compare the two. So thank you for watching and have a great day. More details on my blog and the supplies will be listed in the description. Thanks!